to hit the subscribe button if you want to receive more notifications of uploads. Also, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Hello and welcome to the Shirley Ryder Show and you're with Shirley Ryder and today we have David on Popper on the show. Is that Popper or Old Popper? Old Popper. Old Popper. Yeah, that's alright. Yeah. I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, I'm David, you're on a few bands at the moment. Do you want to tell us briefly about that before we go over your timeline? Yeah, well, we're currently here in Tauranga, I'm playing an original band with 17-year-olds, um, 19-year-olds, 26-year-old, 36-year-old, and I'm my age, which is kind of like gold cart material. 20-year-olds. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You can have fun with music, and that's mm. uh, that's what we show in our band. Also, one of the things is that you can have fun with music. Yeah. Music doesn't um, doesn't matter what age. You that's know, right. You, as long as you're connected to to the love of music, you're all good. Yeah. So I'm with Flavor Town, yeah. and um, F L A V A Town, and we've been going since July of 2019, only last year. Right. So we're a new emerging band. Mm -hmm. And um, you know we've, we play all original material written by all of us. Write, we all write, we all sing. Uh, everyone in the band is multi instrumentalists They all mm. play different instruments, not just the one that you see mm. on the clips. So there's a lot of skill factor yeah. there in and, that band. And, and and if we come to your gig, what sort of uh, music would we expect to hear? <laughs> You'd expect to hear, um, our genre is quite eclectic because we all come from different ages and stages, yeah. you know, and we all have different influences, you know, as you would. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we, everything from, we touch on jazz, jazz, funk, reggae, soul, R&B, rock. Yeah. Uh, it's just a mishmash of everything, yes. but, yeah. you, know, we, uh, you know, we flesh it all out and uh, you know, presented in a way that it'll be you know, digestible. Nice, mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, um, yes, you're multi-instrumental, but you're mostly known around here for your um, you play sort of percussion and congas. And in fact, um, David, you played um, on one of my tracks recently. Yeah, yeah. No, that was that was that was a uh, bit of a cool thing. I was just talking to Shane one day, and he said, "Oh, we should hang out." And yeah. Shane Davies, your producer, and we should hang out. And I'm like, "Yeah." He rang me up one day and just said, oh, what are you up to? And I said, no, not so much today, he said, we'll bring your gear up, let's just have a chill. And we went yeah. out there and he told me about your track and yeah. had a listen and thought I could hear the spaces in there. And so I thought, well, I'll just climb on in there and... That was very good, thank you. And throw yeah. some magic dust on it. I don't think what that one was called, it was a, um, it was a reggae one, I know that much. It's on um, Shirley Ryder and the Faith album, but I forgot the name of Mind Doesn't really it get up to get words of my own songs, you know? You can easily get distracted when you're up on the stage too. I mean, my mind goes off to things that I did when I was six years old, you know? Yeah, like, I would that, like, that. Keep your mind in, on the job. That's right. And in the game, because, you know, you can wonder if you've got a mind like mine that does. Right. Throw you out there sometimes. Thinking mm. about the next break and what drink you're going to have? Kind of. Definitely <laughs> 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 not too many. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, back to the interview. So, uh, we digress. No, it's all good. <laughs> so, tell us about how you got onto music, first of all. You, you... Well, so it goes right back to when mm. I started, um, a, a little bit of history. I, I was born in Central Hawke's Bay in the mm. town of Waipukuro. 
and grew up on a farm, yep. a 5,000 acre farm in a place called Pronga, who were way out on the coast. And uh, on that farm was a house, one of the many houses, and there was a big Cook Island population there in the 1950s. Yep. My parents came over way back then, you know, they were young people and they came over and new land, new language, new culture, everything. And they come over from Raro, um, and my grandfather's Tahitian on my dad's side. So I come from drumming culture. Right. And they used to meet at this place called Coconut Grove. Yes. All the locals around there knew it as Coconut Grove. And you know, you'd go down to Pronga and people say, hey, you want to the Coconut Grove family? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. On Facebook? Facebook, yeah. So that's my music brand name, if you like. I use that name because it was the very mm. first place as a mm. five-year-old that I saw music played live. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you know, you know, nine kids in the family, five brothers, all Afros doing the Michael mm. Jackson mm. stuff, playing guitars, basses. I'm like, whoa, I love that. Yeah. And just something about it stuck and it has stuck with me ever since. And yeah. of course, because um, like we share something in common, because like, you were brought up, you said that you were watching, um, you used to watch different people in the churches and stuff playing, and I used to do the same with the piano, I used to always watch, and um, then I actually started playing the piano, so that's that's been a big, I mean, even Elvis did that, didn't he? Well, you know, Oh, speaking of which, <laughs> sorry, <Elvis? laughs> Yeah, There's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, the, the thing with that was that, you know, I was listening to music yep. more and watching, as you say, because, yep. you know, I, 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 I always make a lousy date going out to a pub or something mm. in my teenage years because I just want to watch the band. Yeah. I don't want to yeah, dance. Yeah. I want to watch the band, man. And yeah, I just yeah. Wanna learn some stuff because I'm yep. a visual learner. And um, so, you know, so the, I, you know, I was. At the age of kind of five, someone shoved a bass guitar in my hand. That's C. That's D. That's E. Mm, mm. And um, and at the same time, I used to get my mum's stools and put on the radio because we had this you know, back then mm, one mm. radio station coming in yeah. barely. And um, I, was, I think it was that song um, Piggity Witch. Yeah. I still get that same. Oh yeah, yeah. Feeling. I used to get my mum's knitting needles. That was a good song. And do this on, on her stalls, and I used to sing. Go high, like I said, he used nail knitting yeah, needles. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, the knitting needles, man. Who needs Vic first? Knitting <laughs> needles. So, um, yeah, just used to drum and just play in time, or try to keep time with what mm. was happening on the radio. And, yeah. And, and I found I could sing. So when I became a teenager, and got my first drum kit and borrowed it at the age of 14, I think it was, um, I, I just transferred all that to the kit and yep. I found I could sing and drum at the same time. So. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so where, where did it all go from there? Like, where was your, where was your first band? Well, I don't know, you know, I just kind of, well, my high school band, we, I was in that, we, we did a talent quiz and we kind of thought we were yep. kind of happening, you know, because our our uh, lead guitar, you know, we were 19 at the stage and we were shoving everything into the mm. one app, you know, we had mm. no gear, no money mm. or anything like that. We were just <laughs> young people and, and no ideas, trying to impress the girls and all that sort of stuff. And we did this talent quest and um, my cousin, their father was a judge, so he thought, okay, that's us, we're in. Well, we came second to a nine-year-old girl. Oh. <laughs> I think she was juggling balls or something, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I played bass to heck with, and I, you know, people like Timothy Beach, Randy Meisner from the Eagles, I was listening to how they played mm. bass, so I was mm. listening to a lot of music and just listening to the parts. Mm. I think I listened to more things than I actually played when I was young. Yeah. Because, you know, when you listen, you, you know, you mm. can't teach feel, but you can learn it from hearing it mm. and how it feels, you know, mm. so. Mm. I grew up in the church, um, being an island boy, mm. grew up in the church and, um, and killer musicians, mm. killer musicians. I've they actually, are, right? Eh? I've actually been on record saying that, you know, I, I've, the hottest players I've ever seen are inside those walls. Yeah. I don't know what it is, they just play from a different dimension, I believe, but... Uh, Probably uh, literally. And we had, a, we had a drummer from Auckland, his name was John Bickerstaff, mm. um, I'm now in my 20s. Mm. And he uh, was a beautiful drummer, so I just made way and just and there was percussion mm. rigged there, and no one was playing it. Mm. And I thought, well, actually, we could add the voicings to our music. Mm. 
fucking chimes in there and all that sort of stuff. So I just went there and and played a whole bunch of off beats. Mm. When right. you play drums, you're playing time and on. Mm. And when you play percussion, it's generally off. Mm. So, That's right. Yeah, so uh, I had to kind of learn how to octopus my way through all yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got some great. Um, because I've been to the city church, you know the big one? The, oh, right. Yeah, I've been there a couple of times and they've got like a, it's a laser show or whatever it is, it's like... <laughs> Whoa. It's like going to a rock concert. <laughs> oh, well, maybe Flavor Town should go down there and borrow all their lights and... <laughs> <laughs> or just take over the stage. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put, put, put the, open up the guitar case and put the head out. You know? <laughs> what kind of church is this? Yeah. That's no idea. <laughs> we digress again. <laughs> so moving forward um, again, and um, so you got into your twenties, thirties, and all around. Well, yeah, I started writing songs as well. When I was fourteen, I wrote my very first song. It was a protest song. It was around the um, Falklands Wall. I got up inside a church and belted the song out with yep. all the you know aggression I could find and sat down and realised I had a whole bunch of love bites around my neck. And well, you've done some writing then. What, what do you Yeah, yeah, what I know. What well, do you normally write? I was influenced by Dan Fogelberg. Oh, that's great. James Taylor, Dan oh, Fogelberg, Jerry Beckley, yep. Jerry Bunnell from America, you know, yep. um, Ben Frey, oh, Don yeah. Henley, all their writings. Or some, you know, yeah. I, I, I read a lot too. They still do weird shit and just read the dictionary. You know, yeah. And you know, in there I'd find words because you've got a time frame of like three, four minutes to yep. say your thing. So you, you need that word knowledge to. Uh, actually, you know, you know, I like to ask people that write songs because I, yeah. I write songs, and I think you know we all have our different styles. I'm happy. Yeah. What's your creative process with writing? Um, generally, I'll feel it. You know, the, the, you know, so it's explain, there. explain. I'll, I'll feel. You know, I, I, I might um, you know come across something or I'll see something. And, right. and I just feel like inspired. inspired I, I wrote a song yeah. um, not that long ago called um, uh, Going On. And it was uh, actually, it was a musician here. Um, his name was Mike. And you know, he used to say to me, I used to see him at local jams. He'd say, I want to get myself a girlfriend. I was like, man, you're a fine looking man. I'm sure you can get on the old Facebook with a guitar and get your <laughs> likes up. And, and then I, you Does know. I should do that. Yeah, maybe. That's how you do it. Forget the dating sites. But anyway, he. Um, he moved to Auckland and then I see he was engaged and then a year later he's now getting married and there was awesome. a beautiful photo of him and Aww. his new wife yep. and they're waving out to the crowd and she's holding the bouquet of flowers and he's looking very dapper. Aww. And I thought, you look like a newly crowned king. Yeah. And so I wrote a song yep. based on the photo and of what he might be feeling. What he might be feeling. Yeah, yeah. what he might be feeling is with this new love that he found. Yep. So I was, it didn't involve me personally. No, but, no, but you write about I, someone else. I could, else I could write yeah, from yeah. that perspective, so I wrote that song um, going on. And, and did you kind of feel like you were feeling the feelings as you were writing about her? Yeah, I could, I could well imagine. So relating I used, to how? I could well imagine how he was because I used to sit with him, you know, when we'd have a break, when we'd yeah. be jamming, we'd have a break, and we'd go, oh, baby, you know, I need a girlfriend. I go, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so sort of start off with a bit of a suggestion, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you used to, could, you could take it all sorts So, of yeah, but when I was in the church, I was definitely writing contributed mm. to two albums mm. when overseas. Oh, tell us about those albums. Yeah, the first album was called Fear No Evil, the second album was called Purify Me, and um, I contributed several songs to those arrangements, vocal arrangements, and a lot of them. Yeah. And then we went over to um, Australia and we played at a place in Melbourne called The Forum, which was this amazing theatre in Melbourne. First time overseas ever for me, yeah. 1991. Yeah. And I went over for music. I felt like a rock star because we flew in, we were there like three days and all we did was go to wow. sound checks, back to the motel, eat, sleep and then on stage, do our thing and then we flew out. Wow. That's and and cool. um, came back to New Zealand, Jim Hickey, the weatherman from um, mm -hmm. Television <laughs> One, yeah. uh, he was in the Auckland uh, chapter of the church. He and Rob Harley, uh, who was a foreign correspondent journalist, he was a mm -hmm. pastor. And they put a show together called the Weather or Not Show, and mm. they dragged us around the country, and we toured with them, and I played bass in that band. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a good rock and roll old yeah. and he's like he is on TV, man. He's a beautiful cat. He's just 
What's real good song. Until was Hayden. He sings and yeah. he, he rock and rolls, man. He's a rock and roll. And was that original song? Yeah, yeah. The original yeah, Christian yeah. song. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, we had to kind of like, you know, yeah. run down these songs, get the learning, and then put it in here. And Did they get on Radio Arena? No, no. Of? Well, that church we didn't really align ourselves to any other, like, right. you know, churches. Yeah, and yeah. So Radio yeah. Arena was kind of like. <laughs> Because, um, you know, Anthony Cole, sorry, so don't yeah, want to yeah, spoil yeah. your secret stuff. But Anthony Cole, yeah, yeah. He, he used to work for Radio Radio. Yeah, you know, Anthony and I, when I first met Anthony, Anthony and I had a big chat about oh, our, wow. um, about our um, church backgrounds and that. Yeah. And it was, it was cool, you know, it was, you know, it's all good. Uh, it, it, to be fair, a lot of the musicians I've played with in Tauranga here have actually had church backgrounds. Really? That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, you get to talk to him and you find out, hey, mate, what did you mean? You know, yeah. you know, the, 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 the Yeah. Well, when I was in the church, like, whoa. Yeah, really? yeah that's and right. Those conversations start. Well, actually, Anthony and me and Paul Brooks were having a conversation the other week. And because Paul is another one. Well, you know, that probably will bring me to my time in 2010 when I arrived here. Yeah. Because, you know, I arrived in Tauranga in 2010, had no friends or family. I came up here for a job. Yeah, and um, uh, <clears throat> and my work used to take me all over New Zealand, so I was barely yeah. in Tauranga. To be honest, yeah. I was only here for a matter of a few days, and I'd be off around yeah. the country. So my music life suffered, and uh, I think it was around 2010. Uh, I, I want to tell you this story. 2010, just up the road, um, at driver's bar. Oh yeah. Um, I'd come home from being away, working on the roads, and. Um, and um, I was talking to Tessa McKenzie and I said to her, man, I want to go and you know, watch the All Blacks because they're playing. Let's go find a bar. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know where town was. <laughs> I had no friends or family here. Didn't know where town was. Didn't even know which way to town. I didn't know Tauranga at all. And so we went past Driver's Bar and I looked over and I saw this band playing. You know, and, this, this, and the bar was crowded. So I <laughs> looked into there pretty quick. Yep. No signs on the door. Peek and dip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> they were in there. And they ran the bush. Yeah, yeah, they ran um, well, the bar. Yeah, the bar, and I walked in there, and we walked in there, and um, and Deb says, oh, you know, and the place is just heaving, and there's a band up, and I'm mm. playing, it was Jack Maynard. Oh, uh, Jack's passed away now. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was Jack Maynard, uh, Sandra Phillips. Yeah. Uh, Ducky Cook might have been in there. Oh, he's passed away too. Yeah, 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 and, you know, and, and uh, they were all in there, and um, we, we was in there, and Deb said, sit down at that table. And I said, that, that looks like a band table. She said, oh, that's that, that cool. So we sat down, and, um, <laughs> and this photographer comes over and says, oh, would you like a photo? And I'm like, okay. Was that, wasn't he Mike Davies, was it? No, no, it was a lady. It was oh. a lady. And then um, Charlie. Colling. And then Charlie. Um, Not Colleen. Oh, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. And this <laughs> um, Charlie. Uh, Charlie, he was a country western singer, a beautiful brother. He, yeah. he was uh, MC and he comes out and he goes, you know, I can talk about uh, Kia ora, I can talk, say something beautiful about everyone in this room. And I'm thinking, I think we might be in the private function. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the top table. And then he goes around with his cordless microphone and he's, he's shoving the microphone in under people's faces. Going, oh, wow. What side of the fano are you here with? And I'm like, oh no. And Jack and oh, really? uh, Leslie had come out and spoke about how they met at Driver's Bar yep. and they were celebrating their dual birthday and I just oh. like, I could, I could feel the, you well, know, you know what, as you I were telling, the blood drain. As you, know. you were telling the story, <laughs> I would have made the same mistake because I was thinking that it was the Weekend Warriors they were talking about. Yeah, you had no idea. And then, um, and, then, um, and then Charlie comes up to me and asks me that question, brother, what side of the phone are you with? Shoves oh, the microphone no. in my face and I said, well, you know, we're, we're kind of, Okay, question. No, everyone, hey, you know. And, um, and I said, well, look, the least I can do is actually get up and sing a way out of for, for you. So I got up and mm. sang a song <coughs> and um, for, for them. And uh, then they asked me to sing another song. And I'm with the band and I sang Best of My Love by the Eagles. And they dropped the BBs. And I'm like, whoa, this is nice. Mm. And then uh, Jack came up to me and he said to me, bro, do you play bass? I said, yeah, I can find my way around, kind of. Mm. He says, well, it's my birthday, I want to celebrate. Here, yeah, play the bass. So mm -hmm. now I'm in the band. And I stayed with them. And, oh. then, and he said to me, well, next day we're going to 
were playing over in Hamilton at Sky City, come over with us. Oh, that's nice. And he he opened doors for me yeah. here. I met Mike Lawrence soon after. He introduced me to Frankie Burrell, Mauni. Mm. He then introduced me to, uh, I remember jamming with you and Graham Hardacre mm. at the Weekend Warriors mm. on yes. the Sunday thing. So I'd make sure I'd try to get back to Tauranga yeah. on, on the last Sunday of the month. Yeah, I remember, because Mike used to go there, didn't they, Mike Lawrence? I think. Yeah. And, and there was and a country I, I remember, jam I remember, too. I remember, I remember sitting point. in with you and Graham one, yeah. one time. We, you know, we were, oh, hello, you yeah. didn't even know each other, you know. Yeah, we'll see you. And, uh, and we, we, we did that, that was back in 2011 or something around then. It was before we did the Shirley Bears first album, so <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, and then Frankie Burrell introduced me to Rima Barlow and then boom, the doors oh. Yep. flew open from there because you know Rimmer was dragging me around town introducing me to everything you know uh, being a percussion player you know he'd bring me up at two o'clock mm. what are you up to tonight mm. boy nothing mm. we're sitting up at four o'clock mm. and I'm like who's we and then yeah, he'd yeah. tell me some random names and I yeah. didn't even know these people yeah yeah and he'd drag me off and I'd be saying to the drummer brother what's the genre you guys yeah, actually yeah. playing oh we play classic rock oh cool yeah yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah it's always easy but you know that got me introduced around town, and then I started to find my family, if you like, yeah. that didn't have family. Yeah. Through music. Yeah. And, um, and I, you know, got so around and said, and then, you know, and then I got introduced to playing at uh, Marais. So yeah. I started playing like at Marais with the brothers, and and we played at the Sits Club one night, and I looked up and there was a sign, you know, Tauranga Māori Show Band, and I'm like, whoa, and I'm still in that band. Right, I'll tell us about that one. Well, for me, that was a huge honour because I, I, you know, I wanted to connect with the iwi here, because but I didn't know how, and mm. through the medium of music, I was able. To. Oh, so, that's really um, cool. So, what kind of a show? Oh, we we I'll give it night air. We I, we did the show when I first started playing with them. Uh, it was one hundred and forty dollars to get into yep. the door. Yeah. And um, we were sitting behind Macy Ricker and uh, Rhea Hall, and then yeah, what. Well, I'm looking out at this crowd, thinking how blessed am I, and I'm up yeah. on the stage with these cats, you know. Yeah. Jeff Paro, his wife Denise Kiriwai on the sax, and we were playing, you know, young hearts running free, but mm. playing all this funk groove yeah. stuff. You know? So I was going to ask you about, um, you know, to do with Flavor Town, because I read online that you guys all meet up at. Um, to your home one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. So. Yeah, two, 2000. And, and you were all studying music and sound? Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. To, that came about uh, Sweet Echo. Um, oh, a great band. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Sweet Echo, the man, he he did the uh, a lot of Timmy right. Cooper, uh, Pete Ormsby, Jeff Kildare, Anna Cruz, you know, they, they yeah, all stunned the diploma oh, um, at Toy Orphanway and, and, and a whole bunch of uh, Daryl. Darren, um, That's Darren right, as he well. Did, he he yeah, did the uh, yeah. He did the, um, the the diploma as well. And Sweet Echo said to me, "Hey man, I, I did the diploma. And he said, well, brother, you should do it. And yeah. you know, maybe you want to think about doing it. And we can speak the same language then." Yeah. And, I, and I knew that. Okay, I'll give it a crack. So I, yeah. I applied, and so 2019 in February I came up here and mm -hmm. um, stayed up here for the whole year and did my diploma. So and it's a year, and, yeah, and, and, and what do they teach you? Oh. Let me put it to you this way. <clears throat> if you go to a hall and it's called music, and inside that hall when you walk in the doors, a whole bunch of rooms, and you just open up each room, and it's like someone clicked on the lights and you went, oh, oh. Okay, so that's that part of the music. They teach you everything, right from um, off stage, the business aspect of the music industry, uh, media, how to yeah, use, it utilize is. media, um, you know, SoundCloud, all that stuff, you know, uh, Instagram, all that sort of stuff. So, so what, what? Business units and. What, and would that. you would you have a tip for me? The, what would be your number one tip for me for my um for my show for my social media tip? You're asking me. Winging it, man. I haven't got to that door yet to open it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well then. There's <laughs> always a forever learning. Music is a forever learning. And you know, the more and more I look, and the more and more yeah. I can see, hey, I was lazy. I didn't yeah. apply myself. 
and three, I should have done this a long time ago, but I'm glad I'm, I've done it and I'm yeah. glad I'm there and I recommend it to any musician. Yeah, I would love to do it. No matter what level you're at, because there's something to learn. The studio, yeah. microphones, microphone technique, the proper microphone. Yeah, yeah. before it used to be, hey, because he passed me that black microphone <laughs> over there, plug it in, <laughs> doesn't work. Yeah, that'll you do. Know, but, you know, we yeah. place wedges, because you know, you, sometimes when you're on the stage and you hear the eh, feedback thing, yeah. it's as simple as the wedge is in the wrong place because that microphone can yeah. pick up, it's got uh, um, address, uh, back address that it will pick up everything coming forward. So you just That's shift right. the wedge yeah, over yeah, there yeah. when you look at the microphone and the kind of microphone you're using. Yeah, so we, yeah. we draw into all of that sort of stuff. So. Do they do a lot of, you know, like uh, learning to read music as yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah, theory. The oh, theory. Um, uh, that was in year on one. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, that's that's where that's, you, that's where you do this. You know, you sit next to someone brainy and it's just kind of yeah. You know, like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> question looks like. question ten. I don't know. <laughs> you wrote another do I? You know. Got zero on that. <clears> yeah, yeah. <throat> so there's there's mm -hmm. all that. It's, it was fun, and you know we we and uh, we all met there as Flam Town. And that, they, they got some good choosers there for the course? They're all in the industry. Yeah, that's got it. They're still in the industry, wow. they still work in the industry, they're very supportive. Because Simon Maxwell does, uh, he, you know, he was he produced Nine Inch, in fact, Nine Inch Nails um, Hurt video, but actually, because I did actually interview him mm. when we started, yeah, it was great. Yeah, he's, so, he's yeah, lovely. yeah he, he's, he did all our he's media, all our camera stuff. So he's part of that course as well, because he does yeah. the photography there. Yeah, and you've got to get used to cameras, you know, like, um, we were, I, I can remember one day with Flavor Town, we were, we were rehearsing, we were just working in the mm. studio one day, and, and boom, the door came open, and all these people came in with cameras, and they're telling us to keep rolling, and I'm on yeah. the drum kit. Thinking. And now I've got a camera oh, wow. right in my face. Yeah. And yeah, if you're not used to that, it can be disconcerting. Yeah, yeah. yeah and um, so you kind of have to get used to having cameras shoved in your face because you know the the world of entertainment is audio visual. Yeah, imagine, imagine being really famous and having cameras everywhere you meet people. Mm. Oh, that's oh, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I can only dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do that in Flat Town. We, we mock each other, you know, if I see Ash or someone around town, you know, I might see him walking around and I'm like, hey, hey, who's that guy that's on my phone all the time, you know? <laughs> and we, just, and we just diss each other all the time. Yeah, but but Flavor Town, uh, beautiful cats, uh, yeah, we're family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're, we're very close. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, do you think, is there anything else that you want to add that I've missed? I just think that, you know, um, well, yeah. Thank you for um, having me. Oh, you know, for was, you know I've, I've had ten years of playing in Tauranga, and mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, the music family here is um, very small, but it's very diverse too. You know, I, I, I was just saying last night to Jill Layton, I was having a chat to her, and I was saying to her, look, I've been to like five pack houses, which have been co converted yeah. into studios between here and Kutsukutsu. Yeah. yeah, you know, there's musicians out there doing their thing. And so the, the 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 world of music here is incredible, mm. you know, because I'm I'm rolling with the old cats, you know, with the Jeff Pod Walls and the Trevor Borneuses and mm. and I'm learning it. You know, when you play with people at that calibre, mm. you've you've only got like a, a bar to, to go from zero to hero, right. you know, because half the time you don't even know what's coming out, right. and they'll just call a song, and it's just like, oh my God, here we go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, right. kind of like, it's a bit like that, but then you know, then you play with people like Timmy Cooper and Ara and, and Jeff Kildare and Nick Ritanui and all those those cats again, a different generation, but they still have that same ethos mm. and they still mm. have that same uh, love of the music and, and the love of the uh, of the uh, family. That, that's what I want to say is that the musical family here is, mm. um, in Tauranga is really uh, awesome. Yeah. And thank you to you all for um, supporting me um, and having me along on the journey mm. too. That's my chance to say thank you to all the brothers and sisters in the music world here. Mm. Thank you very much for being on the show. On the show. <laughs> <laughs>
Also, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and leave a comment. I love to hear from you.